Hello YouTube, this is Asatsu5 and this is going to be a short term review on the Prodigy, the Springfield Prodigy in the 4 quarter commander size. And just to set the stage uh, for why I like this gun, um, and it might not be founded, but uh, uh, I am dysgraphic, it interferes m with my uh, handwriting, I have terrible handwriting, and the condition is called dysgraphia. And sometimes people with dyslexia have dysgraphia also. Usually if you're dyslexic, uh, there's a few other, uh, I hate to call it learning disabilities, but learning disabilities that you're more acceptable to. And um, you normally don't have dysgraphia without dyslexia. So if you have dyslexia, you, it's very common that you might also have dysgraphia. And I'm going to uh, show that to you here in a second. But um, anyways, uh, also, no one's ever taught me how to properly shoot a handgun. It's just something that I've been experimenting myself. Uh, I watch YouTube videos. I buy books. And no one's ever taught me how to properly shoot a handgun. The only lesson that I had was from my friend Daniel who taught me how to shoot from cover. With, and I was using my Ruger Mark III uh, 22 with the pack light upper. And that's really the only tactical lesson I ever got. Um, but I'm going to show you my target. And also my longtime subscribers know that I'm not the best shot. And that's why I'm setting the background. But with this gun... I'm doing a lot better. You can see that I, uh, I, what I'll do is I'll uh, shoot uh, paper and then I'll go shoot the steel. The paper is at 20 feet, the steel is at 30 yards, and I had two flyers. Everything else was in the head. Then I was shooting center body of mass after shooting some steel. And uh, although I probably hit the lungs, uh, but I didn't hit the sternum or the heart. It was more or less the lungs. And then I had one flyer. And then I shot steel, steel, steel. And then I had four rounds left with this box of ammunition. And I shot what I was pretending to be the pelvis. I got two in the circles, one in the eight, and uh, one in the five. Or actually, that's kind of five or six, you know, kind of the split. And then I had that flyer and that flyer which this could have hit something that might have got something in the leg but anyways that was my shooting and i was shooting about uh, around a second which is fast for me i know for competition shooters that's not very fast but uh, uh, just to let you know i made this journal i literally created this journal the quality is terrible but I'm into bookbinding. It's interesting to me. And so I'm keeping a journal. And I drew a picture of the target. It's terrible. You can see my handwriting. And I put the um, um, 6 yards for paper target. 30 yards for steel. Springfield Army Prodigy. 18 out of 22 hits on the paper. Um, and then um, uh, on vitals I think I put. Um, and... Um, that's with a uh, standard ballpoint pen, I think. Um, let's see. This is with a fountain pen. It's not much better handwriting. And I can kind of read it, but I, I sometimes have trouble reading my own handwriting. But that's just to set the, ground, the background of me and shooting. Now, it could be the lack of training, or it could be the dysgraphia that's making it difficult for me to shoot. But I found I can shoot quite well with my Ruger Mark III. My Waffle PPK is okay. And then the um, Micro 1911, I'm going to show a picture of it right there, um, was decent actually. And so uh, with this gun, my accuracy has been really, really well. Um, now, I didn't do as well on the steel targets um, as I did last time, but I shot at the steel targets considerably more times, giving me more opportunity to miss. So I got into a rhythm with the steel targets, and I'm going to put that video at the end of this review so you can watch and, you know, see how this gun, or my improvements, how this gun improved me um, uh, at 30 yards. So anyways, I usually use the 20-plus uh, uh, 
or the 20 uh, extended round magazine for target practicing, the flesh one, uh, keep pilot points in it. And I loaded this thing all the way up. It ran fine, but unfortunately, towards the end of my shooting session, um, it wasn't holding open on the last shot with the magazine in it. Now it is, but it wasn't doing that earlier, uh, or um, when I was shooting. And I shot roughly 125, 150 uh, rounds. I don't know the exact amount that I shot the last time I went to the range. But I shot 100 rounds uh, today, and I know that 1911s require a little bit more maintenance, so maybe um, uh, cleaning this gun will fix that issue. But uh, this gun ran super, fi super fine, or super good. Um, never had a stovepipe, never had a failure to eject, never had a double feed. Uh, it just... Every time you pulled the trigger, as long as there was a bullet in the chamber, it went bang. And uh, the only issue I had was that it wouldn't always lock up on the last shot. Uh, so anyways, let's talk about this gun specifically. What I like, what I don't like. Um, first off, one thing I really don't like about this gun is that it comes with a tooled guide rod. You have to get an Allen key or Allen wrench to uh, take this guide rod out, and uh, I'm just not a fan of that. And I haven't d disassembled this gun yet. Uh, I'm going to clean it, but, uh, you know, I just prefer to have tools take down. And so the less tools that it takes to take down a, uh, a gun, to me, the better. Um, let's see. Um, the only other thing, well, there's probably two things that I can kind of complain about, but don't get me wrong, I love this gun, and it, it has been so accurate and reliable for me that I, I really feel good about carrying it. But um, anyways, the thing that I probably would change the most other than the guide rod is the uh, optic. I paid extra for this optic. It came with the gun. It's the Dragonfly optic. And uh, the thing that I don't like about it is that um, you have to press the button to turn the uh, dot on. So uh, the cool thing is, let me get this centered. You can press it and you can uh, change the intensity of the dot. Uh, but I usually do the brightest or the second brightest. Uh, but... I don't like the fact that it's not like a shake on. Uh, I'd prefer this to be off and then when I draw the gun for it to shake on with vibration. Because uh, if you forget to turn the red dot on and you're out on the town, then guess what? You have to take the gun out of your holster and turn it on or not have a red dot. So you have to make a mental note every time you leave the house to turn on the red dot. It lasts about 60 uh, second, oh, 60, uh, 16 minutes, and then uh, it cuts off automatically. Also, the um, um, grip uh, module is pretty abrasive, uh, which is a, both a good and bad thing. It's just, you know, I don't know. I think I, uh, I'll rock it not as, quite as abrasive. Uh, maybe bigger uh, checkering as opposed to this fine, um, almost sandpaper-like thing. I don't know. Maybe if I shot it with gloves, it would be a little bit better. Uh, but I found a gunsmith online that seems to do good work. And um, when I get the money, I'd like to send this to them to exchange the guide rod to a toolless guide rod. Um, to polish and replace the, or to replace the mem parts and polish maybe the feed ramp. I do not want him to touch the um, uh, trigger pull or trigger weight um, on the trigger. I don't mind if he tailors the uh, trigger size to my finger, but if it's a four pound trigger, I want it to be a four pound trigger. And I think I want to change the um, a safety to uh, an aftermarket safety that's, I don't know, better. <laughs> I, I think I actually just want it to be a silver uh, safety just for contrast. But uh, maybe, I, for the first time, I tried putting my thumb on the um, um, manual safety uh, and, uh, um, and shooting. I've never done that before, and it was a weird sensation to feel this slide. So I thought maybe if it was a little bit wider, uh, it wouldn't be that big of an issue. Um, 
But yes, I love this gun. I would carry it any day of the week if I can, if I have the clothes to conceal it. It's definitely not a beach gun, uh, but I love it. And um, if I can get good enough to shoot competitively, I'd like to take this gun and shoot competitively. But that's probably not going to happen in a while. <laughs> uh, but um, anyways, love this gun. And um, I feel it's a good investment. If you want to get into the 2011 mar uh, market, uh, I think this is a good one to start off with. It's relatively affordable compared to the Statco's and the Pit Viper and all those type things. And so if you want to get a 2011 double stack 1911, uh, I think this is a good one. In fact, my experience with 1911s have been so good, I want to get me a single stack 10 millimeter 1911. Which to me is, you know, that a 10 millimeter is a powerful round. But I was like, well, if my 9 millimeter accuracy is improved with so much with this uh, 1911, I wonder how much accurate I can get with a 10 millimeter over my Glock. So, um, um, anyways, love this gun. And if you want to shoot, see me shoot 50 rounds at steel targets at 30 yards, stay tuned. So that's it. I'm a Sock C5. Right, and I'm, I'm back. back. Got a fully loaded 20 round magazine. And I'm only shooting steel. So let's see if I can do better than earlier. Miss. It didn't hold open on empty. I did a little bit better. Still shot probably around a second. I know that's not fast, but that's, you know, I guess that's quite slow if you're a competition shooter. I'm not gonna load a full magazine now. Um, now that I've shot two fully loaded magazines, I'm only gonna load about five or 10 at a time. Okay. Let's see, right steel target. It didn't lock open. I guess that's a good data point. Okay. Right steel target again. It's not locking open. I guess that might be because it's dirty. I'm not used to shooting 1911s. You can tell me in the comments what you think. It's not really malfunctioning in the sense that, um, you know, it's not cycling, it's just not locking open. This is gonna be my last magazine. Hopefully I'll end on a good note.
That was terrible. Well, I'm out of ammo. I got in kind of a rhythm, but um, still not as quite as good as I, not quite as good as I'd like to be. I was fairly happy with my close uh, paper target. Uh, obviously, it's closer, so it's a, a little bit easier. These paper targets are about four paces away. I'm going to have to do the math. Um, um, I, I think that's... Um, uh, that might be uh, 20 foot away. And um, the steel targets that I'm shooting at are a little bit over 19 paces away. I think last time I did my stride or my calculations for compass and pacing, 14 paces was 66 feet. It probably needs to be cleaned. Yeah, the this right here, it it's dirty. That might be why it wasn't locking open on the last round. I've never cleaned a um, 1911 before, and I hear this one's kind of tricky. You need a, a Allen key for the guide rod, so I have to check that out. But it didn't malfunction in the sits that uh, it didn't cycle, it shot, it shoots better than I shoot, and it makes me a better shot. So I'm very happy with it. I would say it's more reliable than the Smith & Wesson 5.7 by a large margin. But I need to see what hollow points I have multiple boxes of and run some hollow points through it. All right. I'll have a tabletop soon.